Hi and welcome to CBN 4's Primetime News Package for today. I'm your presenter, Alian Christopher. Let's take a look at the main headlines for today. Minister for Environment challenges village councils to develop disaster management plans. A plane crashes on takeoff from Havana Airport in Cuba. And scores killed in a shooting at a high school in Texas. Stay tuned for these and other stories when CBN 4's Primetime News returns. We'll be right back. Sweet talk. Dear man, I have a lot of that. Yes, sir. You don't know it's your boy trilogy, urging everybody, young and old, to stay strong and stay healthy. You don't know we're doing it for 2018. Boom. And welcome back to CBN 4's Primetime News Package. A major landslide along the Middleham Falls Trail has forced authorities of the Forestry, Wildlife and Parks Division to temporarily close the trail. The landslide occurred due to some heavy rainfall over the past few days, make, making access very difficult. The Forestry, Wildlife and Parks Division stated in a release that clearing of the fallen debris will commence as soon as the material from the slide is stable. In this regard, the trail will be temporarily closed until further notice. The public is therefore advised to take note. Any inconvenience caused is greatly regretted. And the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has taken the opportunity to the credentialing of His Excellency Kim byung hyun as the Republic of Korea's ambassador to Dominica to signal its strong support for the ongoing peace process on the Korean Peninsula and for the planned summit between the presidents of the United States of America and of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. During talks with the ambassador who had earlier presented his credentials to President Charles Angelou Savre, Minister for Foreign and CARICOM Affairs, Honorable Francine Barron noted that though Dominica was far from the Korean Peninsula, the peaceful resolutions of the Korean conflict was in the interest of the Republic of Korea, a strong partner of Dominica, as well as the entire international community. Minister Barron expressed the hope that the upcoming summit between the Presidents of the United States of America and Democratic People's Republic of Korea would accelerate the peace process and result in the eventual denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and ultimately in the formal cessation of the Korean War. Kindergarten students of the Massa Kinfield Primary School this week participated in what is called Science Week. Kindergarten teacher at the school, Miss Gabriella Daru, explains the activities undertaken by the school's kindergarten classes. We are supposed to be doing animals, which is our theme for our class. We have two kindergartens. This class is doing animals. The other class is doing animals as well. Um, we have an, an aquarium where the children can observe the fish and their characteristics, how they move, how they feed, how they grow, and eventually they're going to multiply. So then we tell them that animals can make more in great case, so they reproduce. We don't tell them reproduce, so they can make more. And um, we have our bunny masks, as you all saw. 
um, just to let the children know that it's a type of animal and they are familiar with a bunny so they know how it moves it can jump it can hop and if you looked around you could see them moving all around and we also had a kitten and the parents played a big part as well they brought in the supplies for the students they have been very supportive they brought the kitten and it's i believe that today has been successful and the children are learning as well as enjoying it while they do so and we'll be back with more news right after this break stay tuned Sweet talk, dear man, I have a lot of that. Yes, sir. You don't know your boy trilogy, urging everybody, young and old, to stay strong and stay healthy. You don't know we're doing it for 2018. Boom. And welcome back. The Inter American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, ECA delegation in Dominica held its National Uncomfortability Seminar at the Prevo Cinemall Conference Room in Roseau. This annual event provides ICA with the opportunity to present its achievements for the preceding year. An opportunity is provided also for its partners and beneficiaries to discuss and identify strategic actions and new demands for short to medium term action. Over 20 participants attended the seminar. The featured speaker was Dr. Reginald Thomas, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries. In his delivery, he commended ICA for its response post-Hurricane Maria and made special mention to the support towards rapid propagation of vegetable seedlings for distribution to farmers. He aligned the support to improve food and nutrition security as well as declined prices of vegetables after the disaster. He also recognized the collaborating efforts, well, the collaborating partners, CADI and the OECS Commission. All the technical officers in the Ministry of Agriculture participated, as well as other clients, stakeholders, and organizations with whom ICA works in close collaboration with. The seminar concluded with discussions with partners, beneficiaries, and officials of the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries which resulted in a number of proposed actions and comments regarding future programs of the Institute. Minister for Environment, Climate Resilience, Disaster Management and Urban Renewal, Honorable Joseph Isaac, is urging village councils across Dominica to consider at the community levels developing disaster management plans. Isaac stated that while building back better, he wants the village councils to consider physical infrastructure and the issue of training at the community levels. The minister made these remarks at a consultation organized by the Ministry of Ecclesiastical Affairs, Family and Gender Affairs, and the Department of Local Government and Community Development. You to consider at the community level developing these disaster management plans. So what we are looking at, you'll have an overall government system, a national disaster management plan, slash climate resilience development strategy, all that will be tied with each other. And then, after you have that plan, you need to look at mobilization. How do you mobilize within the communities, the people within the community? So if, for example, you are in the Grand Four constituency, how do you mobilize Mon John, Rivier Civic, and Grand Four? I'm saying that because your government is on the way with a plan to implement regional relief centers. Isaac further mentioned that each community might not have a large facility, but there will be a regional center. The question is, how do you mobilize when there is an announcement on radio a day before, two days before, that a storm is approaching Dominica and we expect it to be a category two or category three? What do we do? 
how do we engage bus drivers in the village to get and gather the most vulnerable people? How do we plan and organize a food bank for those communities? As I said, it's not, it's not whether we'll have a storm or whether we'll have a, nat a nat natural disaster. The question is when. The Minister for Disaster Management further noted that these matters need to be treated with urgency. And also in the news, the catastrophic devastation caused by the monster Category 5 Hurricane Maria has taught the people of Dominica a valuable lesson which will linger on the minds of even the young ones for many, many years to come. Hurricane Maria clearly taught Dominicans that climate change is real. Acting Local Government Commissioner Glenn Roy Toussaint said that in moving forward, we either develop adaptive and mitigation strategies or continue to suffer the consequences of climate change. In so doing, the Acting Local Commissioner called for the development of a new thinking approach in relation to building resilience. It means, therefore, we have to develop a new thinking. And that new vision moving forward is that we have to breathe resilience. We have to eat resilience. We have to sleep resilience. And importantly, we have to leave resilience. We certainly have no option but to become resilient individuals, resilient communities, and, up, up, and ultimately, a resilient country. It is Tusa said that it is against this backdrop that the Department of Local Government and Community Development organized this National Resilience Consultation for Councils. The consultation has three broad objectives. One, to allow councils to have a clearer understanding of the Climate Resilience Education Agency of Dominica, often called the CREED, as well as Dominica's Low Climate Resilience Development Strategy. The consultation is also seek to build consensus on the role of the councils in building community resilience and finally, the avenue will be explored for the development of community-based climate resilient projects. I wish to... He further encouraged the village council clerks, chairmen, and other persons participating to take this consultation very seriously since it will serve as a roadmap for the councils and, by extension, the community's climate resilient strategy in pursuit of the realization of climate resilient in Dominica. And we'll be back with more news right after this break. Stay tuned. Sweet talk. Dear man, I have a lot of that. Yes, sir. You don't know is your boy trilogy, urging everybody, young and old, to stay strong and stay healthy. You don't know we're doing it for 2018. Boom. And welcome back. A Cuban Boeing 737 with 104 people on board crashed on takeoff from Havana's Jose Mati International Airport earlier today, according to Cuba's state-run television. The flight was headed to the Cuban city of Olguin and casualties are reported, an airport source stated. The western city of Olguin is about 500 miles east of the Cuban capital. Cuban state media originally reported that the flight was bound for Guyana. Ten people were killed and several others injured in a shooting on Friday morning at a high school in southeastern Texas, city of Santa Fe, a law enforcement official said on condition of anonymity. Gunfire erupted at Santa Fe High School about 20 miles outside Galveston not long after classes began around 7.30 a.m., officials stated. Authorities later found explosive devices including pipe bombs and pressure cookers in and near the school, the law enforcement official said. It wasn't immediately clear if any had exploded. A male suspect, believed to be a student, has been arrested in the shooting and a second person, also believed to be a student, 
has been detained as well. Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez stated, two law enforcement officers are among the injured, according to the source who spoke, to, who spoke anonymously. One man is in critical condition with a gunshot wound in one of his arms, said David Marshall, the chief nursing officer for the University of Texas Medical Branch Hospital. This is the third school shooting in eight days across the United States and the 22nd since the beginning of the year. Witnesses described the students running from the school as they heard gunshots. They also described the hearing an alarm at the school, though the sequence of events wasn't immediately clear. The school has been cleared of all students and staff who have been directed to a nearby facility to reunite with their families. And every bishop in Chile offered his resignation to Pope Francis earlier today after a three-day emergency summit at the Vatican to discuss child Chile's sex abuse scandals. In total, 31 active bishops and three retired bishops announced in a statement that they had ordered to resign over the scandal and place the issue in the hands of the Holy Father so that he might freely decide for each one of us. The simultaneous resignation of all the bishops in a single country is thought to be unprecedented in the, mo the modern history of the Catholic Church. Vatican spokesman Greg Burke said he had no comment on whether Pope Francis would accept the mass resignation. Pope Francis called the country's bishop to Rome after he received a 2,300-page report detailing sexual abuses by priests in Chile. At the center of the scandal in the bishop of, is the Bishop of Ozano, Juan Barros, whom Francis appointed in 2015 amid an outcry that Barros had known about the cover-up of abuses. And that's how we come to the end of today's primetime news package. On behalf of the entire CBN4 team, I am Alan Christopher saying thank you for watching and do join us again next time.